Last week I ranted a lot about iRacing's current situation with racecraft, dirty driving, etc. But I didn't really provide many other solutions besides be better. So that's what I want to focus on today. What can iRacing themselves do to force people to become cleaner drivers? I have five solutions today ranging from the most realistic, getting up to some pretty crazy stuff that I still think could be viable. So let's just get right into it. And number five is standardized punishments. Right now, I think that protest outcomes, suspensions, permanent bans, all of that is just way too inconsistent and subjective. iRacing needs to be harder on this system where if you screw up X amount of times, you're done. It doesn't matter. iRacing has a big enough player base to these days where we can get rid of the bad apples and not have to worry about the game dying. I've seen so many overly aggressive drivers, intentional wreckers just pop up back on the service right after the incident happens. They're just getting warning after warning after warning, maybe the occasional one week ban, but the only thing that gets you permanently banned these days seems to be chat offenses. And that's not a point of me saying that chat toxicity should be made more lenient because it's the opposite of that. Here is my proposed solution. There should be two types of offenses, minor offenses and major offenses. And without exception, three minor offenses should equal one major offense. A major offense would be anything like intentional wrecking or something that is egregiously bad, whereas a minor offense will be anything against the sporting code. If you're doing something against the sporting code, it should be something in terms of going against your record and not just a warning that gets put off to the side and nobody ever sees again. Now, when you get one major offense, that would be your one and only warning. And then after that, your next major offense is a one week ban period. It doesn't matter how it adds up. And after that, a one year ban, no appeal, nothing. Everything adds up to that. If you get three major offenses or one major offense and six minor offenses, that adds to a one year ban. And then after that one year ban, if you have another major offense, it's permanent. Maybe iRacing was looking to do something similar to that, but I think that a lot of it just got lost in the sauce where people are just stacking up these quote unquote minor offenses that are against the sporting code, but nothing that iRacing is actually punishing right now. The system can be anything really though. It can have any sort of escalation from temporary to permanent bans, I don't care. But there just needs to be something concrete to refer to so that people know in that moment that if they're gonna do something stupid, it'll go against them permanently. And number four, I have lower DQ limits. So many times I've been involved in a race or watching a stream and I just see the same person wrecking over and over again, causing chaos, the entire lobby's against them, and somehow they don't even DQ out of the race. When one person has the power to ruin the experience of 20 plus other people, I think we need to reevaluate how long we can allow these people to drive in that particular race. For instance, the NASCAR C-Fix trucks has an incident limit of 25x before a person is disqualified. Now, how many laps are usually in this race? Usually somewhere around 40. So you're telling me that somebody can cause six wrecks in a 40 lap race and not get disqualified. That is absolutely ridiculous. Honestly, if it were up to me, I would put a 13x as the DQ limit. Now, I know that that probably wouldn't be super popular, but guess what? It would get people to drive safer. And if you're just an innocent bystander and three different wrecks racking up 4x's, I don't think it would happen very often. I know it happens once in a while, but I think that the trade-off of getting these people out of the race who are going to wreck constantly early enough, I think that that's well worth the trade-off. And then also, if you get in a couple wrecks and you're on an 8x, you're probably already damaged and you're probably already wanting to drive safe in the first place. So I think that the odds of this being a negative change are very low. I could be convinced to raise it to a 17x limit, but I really think that a 13x for a 40 laps, I think that that would do it. The goal at the end of the day is to get these wreckers to drive safer. And if they're driving safer because they're scared of getting DQ'd, that's one way to do it. And number three is probably the most crazy idea yet. This is also an idea that Liam Brotherton posed in my previous video, which was a very funny coincidence because I had actually brought it up to a friend completely separately in Discord a few weeks ago. And this idea is to have a multiplier for I rating gains or losses based on the number of incidents that you get in a race. A lot of the problem with overaggression is people's hyperfixation on I rating, and of course, I know how difficult that is, and I've made lots of videos about it. But I think one way that we can make the I rating be tied to people's ability to stay clean is if we have this multiplier. 
suddenly it doesn't become mathematically worth it to boot someone out of the way for one position when the multiplier of your I rating gain is going to go down because of the 4x. Now what would the system look like? That's a good question. I know that the math of ELO wouldn't like this too much. It would cause I rating deflation, but I rating has been inflated for a while, so I don't think that would be too much of a big deal. I propose that your gains and losses become unchanged from 0x to 4x. That way, if you get involved in one wreck and finish last, you don't get completely screwed over by the multiplier. And I think that there's a little bit of wiggle room that everyone needs to have, which is fine. And of course, this all can change for longer length races. I'm just thinking about C fixed right now because that's the main problem series right now. But for the rest of the incidents, here is a table that I propose. Notice that you never go above losing your gains or getting more than double of your losses. So I think that this is a pretty good way to even it out. And you'll never gain I rating because you were safe. and You'll never lose I rating when you would have otherwise gained because you were being reckless. Now, of course, there's going to be a lot of talks about super speedways here. People will get a bunch of X's and super speedways or even short tracks all the time. It's just going to lead to everybody getting less I rating over time. And so this will actually lead into my next section, number two. Number two, I think that safety rating calculations and incident recognition should be tweaked based on the track type. To set a baseline for you guys, my friend June did a calculation to where they found out that a C3.0 license could be maintained at any oval track by just running and getting a 4x every 35 laps. Now I think this is a reasonable calculation for some places and completely unreasonable for others. I would say this is fair-ish for the mile and a half tracks. I probably would like to see it a little bit more stricter, but I'm probably a lot harder on people than the normal person is. So I'll just go with the benefit of the doubt and say this is fine for mile and a half racing, maybe a place like Dover or whatever. But then you'll get to a place like a short track where you're running 75 lap races, even in trucks and be fixed. And then it's like, well, wait a second. Now I can just get by by wrecking two people through that race. So why wouldn't I wreck two people? So I would actually make the system more strict on short tracks, even though we're more likely to see contact and incident on short tracks. Now, this might seem counterintuitive, but I just think overall there needs to be a mindset change for short tracks and iRacing, because guess what? Real life short tracks don't have net code, and it's really easy to sit around and tell iRacing to fix their net code, but there's no way they are not working on that. So in the meantime, I just think we need to work with what we have. Okay, how about this trade-off? Your X's count more against you on short tracks, but it's more like the dirt system where you can only get a 2X for contact and it's a lot more lenient in general in terms of getting the X's. I think contact is fine. I just think that the dumping problem on short tracks is what's leading to a lot of bad racing. Now going in the opposite direction is super speedway racing. I think super speedway racing is incredibly harsh on your safety rating and it is very apparent to see when everybody is grinding safety rating the week before super speedway because it's just a known fact your safety rating will go in the toilet from it. So why I am more lenient on super speedway racing is because when you have a wreck in super speedway racing, one person causes it and there are 10 victims as opposed to a short track race where there's usually one person that causes it and one or two-ish people that get affected by it. And we see this in real life too, not just eye racing. You get to the end of a real life super speedway race and there's only gonna be a handful of cars that are completely clean at the end of it. So I think that the expectation that a C3.0 license is someone that maintains a 4X every 35 laps at Talladega, that's pretty ridiculous. So just making that number more lenient would make people more willing to run these super speedway races. And I don't think that the race would get that much worse because of it, because people disregard their safety rating already in super speedway racing. But anyways, like I was saying with some of the other entries in this list, I don't have the 100% this should be it type of ideas. I just think that there needs to be a more flexible system and maybe iRacing has more data and research that could come up with more fine tuned numbers. And then at number one is an idea that I cannot help with at all, but I'm convinced that it is possible. And that is developing an AI system that can automatically detect fault in a wreck. Now to clear up, I don't think determining fault should be down to, oh, AI thinks that this person had 51.1% of the faults, so they get the 4X. No, I think that a system can be developed that can detect when somebody is 100% at fault. 
just not even a doubt, no question, this person is at fault for a 4X. And when that is the case, I think that the person who is at fault should get the 4X or heck, maybe even an 8X at that point. And then the other person who is involved should get a 0X. This system could easily be implemented for things like bad rejoins, diving the corner super duper hard with no regard for human life, not locking down the brakes for a wreck, the list goes on. There are a lot of things that people do that are egregious that nobody should deserve a 4X for the situation besides themselves. And a lot of the other issues that I brought up earlier get fixed by this as well. So like people won't get DQs if they keep getting involved in wrecks where they eventually get zero access for because the AI clears them. Or they're able to build a higher and higher safety rating because they're driving safe and just getting caught in some accidents that are 100% not their fault. And so they don't count against them. Overall, even with the bugs and whatnot, and maybe having a decent appeal system that would give them a little more work to do, I think that this is a no-brainer for iRacing to at least look into and see if it's possible. But overall, I wouldn't trust iRacing to hire me to fix their game. I think they know a little bit. I'm just here to provide some input. I can tell them that I fixed their game from behind my webcam and my computer, and that's good enough for me. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.